Are you my mum? Oh dear. Last month, my channel hit 300,000 subscribers, which is actually nuts, so thank you for that. You guys are awesome. And to celebrate, I decided to do another Q&A video, something I haven't done since I had only about 4,000 subscribers, which feels like a lifetime ago. You sent me a lot of questions, some of them good, some of them... less good. But before we get into them, there are a couple of things I'd like to talk about first. For those of you watching who play Minecraft, I now have an official Minecraft server, where you can play, hang out and mess around with other fans of the channel. The address is play.cynicalminecraft.net and we have dedicated text and voice channels in my public Discord server, so definitely join that if you want to take advantage of those. In fact, feel free to join my public Discord server if you want to hang out in general, since it's where I'm the most active nowadays. Links are in the video description. Also, I'm now streaming semi-regularly over on Twitch. It'll mostly be gaming streams, but I'll also be doing sort of chill chat streams uh, and editing streams from time to time, and it's just an opportunity for us to chat and hang out, really. So if you're interested in that, follow me over at twitch.tv slash cynicalreviewsofficial and click that little bell icon to get notified of any streams. Also, for this video, I'm once again partnering up with Tab for a Cause. Tab for a Cause is a free browser extension for Google Chrome that allows you to raise money for charity simply by opening up new browser tabs. Every time you do, it will display some ads, and over time, this adds up to quite a bit of money. You also collect hearts every time you open a tab, and you can spend these to decide which of the partnered charities you'd like the money to go to. And for each person who signs up using my affiliate link, I receive a bit of revenue every month. So the more of you who use it, the more I receive. It's quick and easy to install, and it's a great way to contribute something positive in a world that's... really not great right now. But also, it helps support my channel in a way that requires very little effort and no financial expense, so... Everybody wins, really. So do check them out, links in the description. And thanks to Tab for a Cause for sponsoring another video. But with that stuff thrown out there, let's tackle these questions. And I'm sure I... won't... regret this... at all. Alright, let's start with some YouTube-related questions. What made me start YouTube in the first place? I wanted a creative hobby, something that let me write and create something and craft something, that let me express my opinion and entertain people and just have a good laugh, really. And I'd been watching YouTube since the earliest days, really, and thought, yeah, why not have a go? When I was first making videos, I didn't really have any idea what I was doing. I was just kind of learning through trial and error and from watching other people's videos. And I didn't yet have a clear idea on what I wanted to do with the channel, so I just kind of did what felt right. I started off making like topic based videos but later moved into reviewing bad movies because that's the kind of content I like to watch and it fit in with the general theme of my channel that I'd already established. I guess if there was a specific movie that got me started with reviewing movies it was got to be Food Fight. Like I watched it and that film was such a colossal piece of shit, I thought yeah here's some really great material let's do this. At first I was just doing it for fun, I hadn't really planned on becoming a YouTuber full time or making money off it, but at the back of my mind I, I always hoped it'd take off as I think most people do. But fortunately things worked out for the best, and uh, yeah, YouTube is a permanent thing for me now. So why the dog? Very good question. It's a combination of things really. I was originally going to base my channel around the Greek philosopher Diogenes, who was a notorious cynic who pretty much hated everybody, and he was said to live like a dog and surrounded himself with dogs, and the word cynic actually means dog-like in Greek. So I had some artwork drawn up for Diogenes and the dog, but I ended up dropping the Diogenes angle, but I liked the dog so I kept it. And the actual design of the dog is based around the Sprocker Spaniel that we had at the time, Luna, who's sadly no longer with us, we ended up rehoming her because we weren't really the right family for her. Don't worry, she's being well taken care of now, but that's why she hasn't been in any of my videos for a while. And so naturally the next question is the one that you all came here to hear the answer to, are you a furry? No. <laughs> Despite all appearances, I'm not actually a furry, alright? I, I don't... I'm not into all that stuff. Got nothing against furries, but it's just not my thing. I was pretty naive and didn't even think that that would cross people's minds at the time, and if I'd known that that's the association that people were going to have, I maybe would have picked something different. But as much as I complain, I do like the memes, so let's keep it going. What made you decide to start showing your face? Well, in my 4K Q&A, I promised to do a face reveal if I got to 100,000 subs, not knowing that it was only going to be four months away. So I did it for that, and then I decided to put my face into my videos more often, just to kind of break up the monotony and do something a bit different, really. And once your face is out there, you can't exactly take it back, so you might as well go with it. 
How did you originally make yourself known? So, I think it was the Patrick Willems uh, response video that first started to get me noticed by other people. But the one that really made my channel take off was the Sierra Burgess is a Loser review. Uh, I think it was trending at the time, so for whatever reason, even though I only had about 400 subs at the time, the video just got blasted everywhere, and by the end of the month I had 40,000 subs. My favourite video to make was probably... Oh... Either the Am I Normal video, just because the source material was so funny and I was able to make so many good jokes about it. Or maybe the Goop Lab video, because it felt like I was doing something valuable when I made it and just all of the pieces came together to produce something I'm really proud of. The least favourite video I've made is probably the Hellboy video, uh, because it was massively long uh, and I was kind of in a bit of a bad place at the time and kind of trying to push through a depression in order to make it. Uh, so it wasn't a great experience. How would you rank the movies you have reviewed based on enjoyment level? I'd say the most enjoyable, again, is Am I Normal? And then probably followed by Hobgoblins. Because that movie is so bad that it's good and you can't help but enjoy it. And then at the bottom I'd say Slender Man would be number two, just because it was so boring. And easily the worst would be Holmes and Watson, because that thing just irritated me the whole way through. Out of all the movies and shows you've reviewed, if you had to pick one, what would it be? I'm not sure what you mean by that question, but if you mean it in the sense of I'm stuck on a desert island and I had to take one of them with me, it would probably be Monkey Dust. Just because I love that show so much, despite it being kind of hit and miss at times. Definitely check it out if you can, uh, if not just watch my video on it. What film would you love to dissect? Uh, the Room, I'd say. Just because I know so much about it and there's so much I could point to and poke fun at and analyse. But it has already been covered a bunch, unfortunately. Are there any videos or opinions that you've made in the past that you look back at and regret? Yeah, there's a few, uh, but the only one I'm going to talk about is my review of The Happy Time Murders. I was way too sympathetic to that movie because I went into the cinema wanting to like it. I gave it like a 5 out of 10 when really it deserves like a 2 because it's a colossal piece of s***. So after thinking about it a lot more, I decided I wasn't really comfortable with my review being up anymore, so I've now unlisted it. I'll post a link to it in the description if you want to check it out. How was your YouTube experience up to this point? Mostly good, I'd say. I've had a few hiccups and some monumental bullshit to deal with, just like a lot of creators do, but mostly good. What do you like the most about making videos? Just being able to entertain people, uh, make people laugh, just knowing that watching my videos makes people feel better. That's the most rewarding aspect of the job. It really makes me feel better about what I'm doing, and it makes it all worthwhile. How does it feel to be literally watched by thousands of people all around the world? Bit, it's pretty intimidating. Uh, it's a bit weird, honestly. I still haven't got used to that fact and probably never will, but on the other hand, it is really cool. What's the nicest thing a subscriber has ever done to you? One of them became my girlfriend, so that was pretty nice of them. In all seriousness, it's really hard to point to a nicest thing that any subscriber has ever done to me, because... There's so many nice things, like from the fan art, and donations, and help with videos, and helping run my Discord server, and sending nice messages when I'm feeling bad. You know, I can't pick one nicest thing in particular. And I'm not complaining, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Do you have any creators in particular who inspired you to make videos? I wouldn't say that any creators in particular inspired me to make videos, but in the process of making videos, I've definitely been inspired by other review channels I used to watch like YMS, I Hate Everything, Ralph the Movie Maker, Vox's Productions, The Angry Video Game Nerd, and a load of others. There's too many to mention, but definitely check all those guys out if you're interested in similar videos to mine. If you had to give your 300k subs away to another YouTube channel, who would you give it to and why? Definitely Vox's Productions. That guy puts so much work and energy into his videos and they're all so f***ing good. And he's also a really good guy as well, so go check him out if you haven't already. Do you know Cynic Snacks? Yeah I do, he's a good friend of mine and he makes great content so you guys should all go and check him out as well. How did you and the EFAP crew meet? It was after my plot holes video uh, started to gain some traction, uh, Mauler DM'd me and we had a great conversation about Braveheart and then he invited me onto EFAP and it went from there. Yeah, I'll definitely go back onto EFAP, uh, just depends on the subject matter really. Any advice for someone starting out on YouTube? I mean that could be a video all in itself, but my biggest piece of advice would be make the content that you want to make, what makes you happy, what you enjoy watching and what you enjoy making. Don't go into it with the aim of getting big and making money, because you'll probably be disappointed if you do that. Focus on it as a hobby and passion first, and hopefully the rest will flow from there. Alright, before we move on to the next section, let's have some random questions. Does you is homosexualoid? Yes! Yes! 
Does anyone ever stop you in the street and shout at you for directing The Last Jedi? No, that hasn't happened yet, but my inbox is an interesting place. Who is the best person in your Discord? Feelings will be hurt. Well, it's me, of course. Who did you expect me to say? Are you a dog hiding in a man's body? Oh shit, you got me. Are you 13 or 30? Yes! Are you a literal son of a bitch? No, just a metaphorical son of a bitch. What does chuffed mean? It's British slang that means proud, pleased, and happy. So when I said I was chuffed that I'd reached 200,000 subscribers, it was a good thing. You like jazz? Yeah, sure, why not? How many shrimps do you have to eat before it makes your skin turn pink? A fuckload. Opinion on Danny DeVito. Yes! What would happen to a middle-aged mum if she watched every Lifetime movie in existence? She'd probably turn into Anne Fishman. But speaking of movies, let's move on to the media questions. My favourite genre of movies and other media has to be post-apocalyptic and dystopian stuff. It's like crack to me, and I really haven't indulged in it enough recently. I don't believe there is such a thing as the worst movie genre, uh, but my least favourite is probably torture porn. You know, stuff like Hostel and The Human Centipede. That stuff is just gratuitous and it has no redeeming value for me. My favourite movie of all time is The Last Samurai, followed very closely by The Big Short. Both of those movies are ones I can watch over and over again and never get bored. My favourite TV shows include Mindhunter, Mr. Robot, Bojack Horseman, South Park and Peep Show. My guilty pleasure film has to be Mean Girls. It's not a bad film by any means, but I feel a bit weird watching it at my age, but it's so good and I enjoy it so much that I just don't give a shit. What is the best bad movie you've ever seen and why? Definitely The Room. It's pretty much the perfect example of a film that's so bad it's good. From start to finish, it's just so bizarre and unintentionally hilarious. And Tommy Wiseau is the perfect, bumbling, incompetent lead. And we know so much about what happened behind the scenes that there's even more stuff we can point to and laugh at. It really has earned its cult status. Of every bad movie you've ever reviewed so far, which one do you feel is the absolute worst? Objectively, I'd say Food Fight, because that thing is a complete mess from start to finish. But subjectively, I'd have to say Holmes and Watson, because Food Fight is at least unintentionally hilarious and I could enjoy it for that, but Holmes and Watson is completely unfunny, boring and irritating, so you can't even enjoy it ironically. What is your favourite fantasy movie of all time? Bit of an obvious answer I know, but it's gotta be the Lord of the Rings trilogy. The strangest movie I like is probably Donnie Darko. My favourite novel is 1984 by George Orwell. If I could have any book made into a well-made film, it would be The Religion by Tim Willocks. It's about the Great Siege of Malta in 1565. It's an amazing book that I think would make for a great movie, but it's about Christians versus Muslims, so in the current political climate, it's probably never gonna happen. And in terms of any nostalgic movie I can watch at basically any time, I'm gonna have to say the old Schwarzenegger movies like Total Recall and The Running Man. The one cartoon from my childhood I still watch would be South Park, if that counts. Do you like anime? I like some anime is the best way to describe it. There are some tropes and conventions in anime that I really don't like, so it's very dependent on the particular movie or show. The movie trope I hate the most is pointless exposition, where one character explains something to another character that that character would already know, or in that scenario doesn't need to know, but they just need to get the information to the audience. It's just really lazy and boring, and there are far better ways to convey that information. And one I still enjoy despite it being overused is cynical, gruff anti-heroes. I'm a sucker for those kind of characters. My favourite types of villains in media are sympathetic, complex ones, where you can kind of see things from their point of view, and they think that what they're doing is right, like Thanos or Judge Frollo in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The DC or the Marvel movies? If we're talking about cinematic universes, then it's Marvel hands down. Out of all the shitty Netflix teen rom-coms I've reviewed, I'd have to say my favourite is The Perfect Date because it's the least inoffensive. It's actually alright to be honest, despite how much I took the piss out of it. I'd say the worst is probably Sierra Burgess is a loser because there's so many elements of it that are downright creepy, and the ending is just total bullshit. Of the two Lifetime movies I've covered, I'll definitely say that Cyber Seduction is the worst because it's just so ridiculous. How do you feel about the new Star Wars trilogy? Uh, I mean, I don't think they're good. Uh, I think they're pretty bad actually, especially when compared to the original trilogy. But at the same time, I'm not really emotionally invested enough in the franchise to really care. Have you seen The Witcher on Netflix, and if so, what are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are mixed. I think Henry Cavill did a great job as Geralt, but I had a real issue with some of the things they did with the story and lore, but hopefully the second season will be better. 
Yes, I do like the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans, although not the third one for many reasons, but uh, hopefully that means you won't unsubscribe. What are your favourite video games? Uh, a lot of RPGs, so like the Witcher series, uh, Dragon Age Origins, uh, the Baldur's Gate series, uh, Mass Effect, that kind of thing. Why do you think movies based on games are usually bad? Because they don't really even try. I think because they know that they have an audience built in that's gonna go and see the movie regardless, they don't feel like they need to try, and also they think, eh, it's a video game movie, who cares if it's good? And also, they are different mediums, and it's not straightforward to adapt one into the other. I think my favourite game movie is probably the original Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie, because it's just so cheesy and stupid but so much fun at the same time. What is your favourite serious line in a movie? Probably this. They're eating her! And then they're going to eat me! Oh my god! And yes, that was meant to be a serious line, not ironic or anything. Time for some more random questions. Are you gay? Yo, that is messed up, yo. I am not gay, and I sure as hell ain't no fish, all right? Can you teach us to be as British as you? Sure, drink a gallon of tea a day and watch the Harry Potter movies and you'll be most of the way there. Are you my mum? No. But I could be? What's your opinion on turtles? I like turtles. Does all work and no play make Jack a dull boy? Yeah, I saw it in a movie once, so it must be true. Do you have any butter? What for? We're human beings and the sun is the sun. How can it be bad for you? Flawless logic. Checkmate, atheists. So guys, we did it. <laughs> nice. I am actually sub to Pyrocynical. Have yet to meet him in real life though. Subs or dubs? Mm, depends how lazy I'm feeling. Serious question here. Would you go gay with Ralph the Movie Maker and why? If you consider that to be a serious question, I'd love to know what you think a joke question looks like. But here's an actual serious question. Do you ship Shrek and Hitler? I mean, to be honest, that would be a more realistic romance than some I've seen recently. When is the hairy chest reveal? Trust me guys, you don't want that. You think you want that, but you don't want that. But speaking of hairy chests, let's move on to some personal questions. Did you study something related to films or media before you started to make your videos? No, actually, I've just been learning as I go. I did go to college, or university as we call it here, twice. Uh, first time to study philosophy, and the second time to do a master's in medieval history, which explains why I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. In my downtime, I watch a lot of YouTube, movies, TV shows, that kind of thing, uh, play a lot of video games, and I read, you know, fairly standard loner hobbies. <laughs> But I also play Dungeons and Dragons, and there's quite a few D&D questions which I'm really happy about. I've been playing for around two and a half years, and I've been DMing for almost a year now. Uh, I did actually play second edition advanced D&D way, way back in the day as when I was about 10 and I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, but then I didn't play it again until fifth edition, which is what I play now. My favourite class is Cleric, uh, probably Life Cleric if we're being more specific. Of the modules I've played, probably my favourite is Descent into Avernus, which I'm DMing for two groups at the moment. It's like Mad Max in Hell, basically. It's so fucking cool. I got into D&D because I've been interested in it for a little while, and I had some friends that were playing, and it just seemed like the kind of thing I'd really enjoy. And honestly, as soon as I got into it, I loved it. And no, it's never too late to start. If you have even the most passing interest in D&D, give it a go. Why are you such a D&D nerd? I bet you don't shower. Get off the internet, Mum! Any tips for an aspiring DM? Again, this could be a video all on its own, but the most important piece of advice I'd give you is just have fun and relax, and remember that you're supposed to be a player as well. If the DM isn't having fun, then nobody is. Are you single? No, I actually have a girlfriend now. We met online, and it's going really well, actually. She lives in the States, and because of the whole quarantine thing, we haven't been able to see each other since January, which uh, sucks a bit. But as soon as all this business is over, I'm definitely going to visit her again. How are you, man? I'm alright, thanks for asking. I'm as, I'm as well as I can be. What do you set out to accomplish in the next few years, man, career-wise and in general? Um, in terms of the channel, I mean, hell, I'd like to grow the channel as much as I can. Maybe get to a million subs, who knows? Um, but I'd also like to figure out what else I'm going to do with my life outside of YouTube, which I still haven't nailed down yet. And after that heavy question, more dumb shit. Can I blank your blank? If by blank you mean Phil, and by blank you mean bank account, you certainly can. Do you review movies because you're being forced to by an unknown gun-wielding maniac, or do you just enjoy it? 
uh, I, I, I enjoy it. Um, I, I really do. Um, not being forced to, uh, against my will, at, at all. Please and help. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? What do you mean? An African or a European swallow? I, I don't know that. <laughs> Rank your favourite numbers from 1 to 5 on a scale of 1 to 7 for how good they are. Uh, uh, um, 9? Is the cake really a lie? The cake is a lie is a government conspiracy, don't believe it. The cake is real, people! Does Bruno Mars is gay? Yes! Does pregnancy make you cynical? The fuck are you asking me for, man? And the last category of questions relates to content that I have planned for this channel. I don't really want to say what films or TV reviews I have planned for the future because I tend to change my plans a lot. Like, I think something's a good idea and then I start work on it and then I realise, eh, it's maybe not so good. So I don't want to say too much just to avoid disappointment. But hopefully in answering the rest of the questions you'll get a better idea of what I have in mind. What is your process when picking a movie to watch for a video? Generally, I either get stuff recommended to me, or I stumble across something and think it might be a good fit for the channel, or might inspire a lot of good jokes or decent commentary, so I check it out. I'll watch maybe the first half an hour of it, and if I'm not feeling inspired, I'll just move on to something else. Are you going to focus on what the audience might be interested in, or what you're more passionate about when it comes to the content of your videos? It's gonna be a bit of both, um, because I've realised that if I focus just on what I'm passionate about, uh, other people don't really share those interests. So for example, with the D&D uh, videos, I am kind of passionate about making those and it's an interesting subject for me to explore, but they don't do well views wise and they don't financially justify themselves. So I'm gonna have to do a mixture of both, but hopefully I can find more video ideas like the Goop Lab where I can combine something that I'm passionate about with what people are interested in. Do you have any plans to review franchises or series like the Dungeons and Dragons movies? I don't have any specific plans at the moment, but I'm not ruling it out entirely. The problem with doing franchises and lengthy seasons and things like that is that it's more material to go through and it's more to get my head around and it's more to go through come the editing process. So it's a considerably more difficult task. Uh, but yeah, if I can find something that I'm passionate about and think won't drive me insane and that is going to be a good fit for my channel, then sure. Are you ever going to talk about good movies or movies you love besides The Room? Yeah, actually, I do have a couple of ideas. Um, I want to talk about The Edge of Seventeen, which is a teen movie I actually really liked. Uh, I want to talk about Idiocracy, uh, a film that I think is genius. And I want to talk about Brass Eye, a satirical British TV series from the late 90s uh, that nobody's really talked about before. The only issue is that people seem to be more attracted to negative reviews than to positive ones, um, so I have to bear that in mind. But yeah, I am looking forward to reviewing those. Um, in terms of bad movies that are so bad that they aren't worth reviewing, I mean, stuff like Birdemic and The Room and Troll 2, you know, even if I wanted to review those, like, they've been covered to death at this point, so it feels kind of pointless. And generally, if there's, like, a big franchise like Star Wars um, or, like, Game of Thrones uh, that, like, everybody's making videos on, I tend to avoid those just because... I want to do something different, and I don't just want to talk about something because it's trending. But the only movies that I outright refuse to review are, you know, the torture porn movies that I've touched on earlier, just because I refuse to watch them. Have you ever thought about reviewing the horror genre? Absolutely I have. Uh, there's plenty of bad movies in that category, so we will see. Are you still going to review The Lion King 2019? No, because it's kind of old news now, and I don't think I'd be saying anything that hasn't already been said about a hundred times before. Um, but YMS is doing a long, in-depth analysis of that movie, and I'm sure he's going to knock it out of the park, so there doesn't seem to be much point, really. Can you review all the Sharknado movies? Oh man, that's, that's, that's so much shit right there, I think I'd rather not. Any plans to review Pure Flix? Cynic Snacks has already made a great video covering Pure Flix, so go check it out if you haven't already. So I don't feel like there's as much point in me covering it. Uh, but if I can find something particularly interesting from that side of the movie business, then sure I will. I actually do have a video in mind for a uh, religious-themed uh, superhero. Uh, maybe more on that to come. Can you cover more rom-coms? Yep. Yep, they're coming, don't worry. I took a break from them for a while because they got really boring and samey. Uh, but yeah, I've got a couple in mind. Do the next D&D movie video. Yeah, yeah, again, it's coming. Probably gonna be the next thing I make after the next video. Would you do game reviews on your main channel? Uh, I have considered reviewing a few games, but it's a completely different format that I'd have to get used to reviewing. Um, so I don't have any specific plans to do so at the moment. 
Do you plan to do any more American snack food tasting videos? Sure, next time I'm over, why not? As long as I can find some good food to balance it out. And out of everything I tried, I probably hated the Twinkies the most. Those things are just... they're just vile. Are you looking to do future live streams and podcasts, and what kind of content do you see yourself doing in these? So, as I said earlier, I am now live streaming on Twitch semi-regularly, so go follow me on there if you're interested in that. It's mostly gaming streams, although I will be doing some chill chat streams and also editing streams, uh, just whatever I feel like, really. And I used to have a podcast called The Great British Podcast. You can find the archive re-uploads of it on my second channel, Cynical Streams. That podcast fizzled out for various reasons, although I have considered bringing it back, uh, but no concrete plans as yet. If I did bring the podcast back or do another one, uh, I'd like to make it mostly media-based and talk about franchises like, I don't know, the Alien franchise or Terminator franchise or, like, bad horror movies. Um, a more topic-based approach. But with the emphasis mostly being on the banter. But ultimately, my hope is that whatever I end up putting out, it is something that you guys enjoy. So let's wrap up with our final round of random questions. The Rona, yes or no? I'm gonna have to say no. Um, I don't really like Corona, it just tastes funny to me. If a fly can fly, why can't a bird bird? This is too deep for me, man. I, I just make videos on the internet. What do you think has been the most annoying social media trend of the past decade? Probably challenges. You know, like the cinnamon challenge, uh, Tide Pod challenge, you know, that kind of thing. Because not only are they irritating, but people get hurt, so yeah. What is the meaning of life? Asking for a friend. Well, the answer, of course, is 42. Oh, god damn it! Did you take up Mr. Ass Eater's offer? I did not, uh, but these are desperate times, and maybe if another adpocalypse happens, uh, we'll see. This ain't a question, but you need a haircut. Mum, get off the internet! When is your OnlyFans coming? Well, if I can't find any sponsors for the next quarter, maybe soon? But thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this Q&A, and thank you for all your support up to this point and helping me get this far. So take care, and I'll see you in the next video.